where we will as a group get to pick a topic and then go through the motions of a V-Taiwan consultation process. And Avros will walk us through the workshop, the rest of it. Yeah, all of it. <laughs> Okay, hello, yeah, am I, okay. Uh, so we just taste what consensus, uh, don't, no, no, sorry. <laughs> we just know what consensus tastes like. And uh, we now we should, uh, we have the consensus in our stomach and now we need to have consensus in our mind and brain. So now uh, I'm going to, I'm going to have the sessions uh, divided in, in the order of v and process from stage four to stage, stage, uh, from stage one to stage four. Hold on. Okay. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the uh from to start with. I oh, is it kind of too loud? Okay. So before we go into stage 1, I was, I was still need to uh, remind you the outline of the process and maybe some tools so that you can understand and give a, a have a glance at what uh, we will, how we use these tools. And this is the process as a reminder from stage one to stage four and also the online opinion collection and consultation meeting. So for this session, after the introduction of the tool uh, presented by Darshana and Shu Yang, and then, then we will have a, uh, um, an exercise one as a topic poll, yeah. So this is the uh, what will happen. Uh, so uh, we have many tools. Uh, usually, uh, generally, are all open source, and we have three concepts behind these tools. So um, this, I mean, sorry, it might look too small. Okay. Okay. This is a graph. Uh, drawn by Shu Yang, and you can see that uh, from issue. Let's say you can see the proposal stage from issue, uh, qualified issue, then stakeholder discovery. We use HackPad, uh, but uh, it's like uh, use a doc as a way to document everything on the internet. So remember, uh, whenever you whatever you do on v or whatever you do on any civic participation platform, uh, you better uh, record it online so that uh, the participants can keep track of what's happening. Okay, so and then uh, like we also use like SlideShare and um, Say It and YouTube and Discourse also, it's all the way. It's also the tools that we use for documentation, and uh, yeah, you can have these. Uh, so we have these materials on Hackboarder. So later you can uh, look into details how we uh, divide these stages and use what tools for each stages for each stage. And then uh, these are the concept behind each tool. They are interpretation, facilitation, and documentation. And for interpretation, uh, it's trying to bridge the gap, I mean the communication gap between different various 
uh, stakeholders because people are from different backgrounds and they have different stories and uh, experiences. So uh, we need to interpret the term terminologies, jargons, and vocabularies in, varia context in various context contexts. And also facilitation uh, is to uh, facilitate in the engagement and deliberation uh, to from, from conflict to consensus. So interpretation is to get the idea across to each other, while the facilitation is the, uh, the art of collecting opinions from the public. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, the documentation is to also highlight the importance of transparency and accountability. So it's really useful if you have documented everything on the internet, because it's like we do on the hack folder, we have the materials online, so you can also always refer to those materials just by clicks and links. Yeah, so uh, the idea is the transparency because also the process and also the data allows participants to understand the decisions taken through the VTARM process. So, and it also uh, strengthens and build, builds uh, trust among stakeholders and also among like facilitator, between the facilitator and the stakeholders. So uh, the transparency is the core and key idea behind these three concepts. So, okay, uh, this will be uh, the stage one, uh, the proposal. So, um, to do the proposal, uh, like uh, like the NCII case, firstly, we need to de -level, develop a good proposal. So, it could be a like a top-down and also bottom-up proposal, like the Uber, Uber case, UberX case, and also the bottom-up proposal, like uh, the NCI case. Um, so here, um, uh, our re our rule is that if you want to submit a proposal, you need to participate in the mini hackathon, and you gotta uh, submit it. Uh, I mean, in like in person, and then you can doc document it on Hackpad. So we have the rec recording on the internet, and people that participants that cannot join that specific mini hackathon can then uh, read the, the transcripts later on Hackpad. So first of all, we need to have a proposal. And then uh, the participants need to uh, come up with a good name and title. And also it has to be discussed with the community tr contributors at mini hackathon. So take non a CI case, for example. Um, we try to translate uh, non-consensual and also the, the term pornography in Chinese because it's really not that uh, instinct, uh, dis instinctive, instinctive in Chinese. So um, in terms of non-consensual, uh, we have the, uh, so if you read Chinese, we have the translation down there. Well, if it's literally translated, uh, it could be dissemin dissemin dissemination of one's bodily intimate images against one will, but it's it's really long and it's not that actually not that friendly. Well, uh, personally, I feel it's not that friendly for everyone. Yeah, but we have to be specific and to be politically right. So uh, to translate the non-consensual and and the pornography word. But pornography is somehow maybe not that positive itself. So later we use uh, intimate images. Uh, and also the Ministry of Justice uh, suggests that they want to not limit it, the limiting the idea of pornography. So uh, they, they wish they could use bodily intimate images instead of uh, pornography. So, but that's in, in the translation of Chinese. So this is, uh, just want to uh, demonstrate that we need to come up with a good name or title so that uh, when you have that title on the web page on Vita One or what, what, whatever platform you have, uh, the title itself will be very important and critical 
for any kind of stakeholders to have a first glance of the issue. Yes, because the title will be like the attention grabber. So it's really important to have a good name and title. And then um, after you have a good title, then at Mini Hackathon, you also need to discuss this topic with the participants and you need to narrow down the scope of the topic. I know that any kinds of issues may be very, I mean, the scope may be very broad, but uh, we need to focus on specific, sometimes if we have so many participants from different backgrounds and from all walks of life, then we need really need to narrow down the scope sometime so that uh, people get to be focused on specific or the top issue or the core issue of a huge topic. And also ensure the scope is fit for the purpose. And for some case, like NCI case also, uh, we need to strat uh, figure out a strategy like the legislation strategy because it depends on different issues. And sometimes um, the, I mean, the controversy among stakeholders, I mean, it depends and at different levels. So uh, you need to maybe sometimes map out the strategy for, for the later, uh, for the later process. And also, uh, this is really important. You gotta find out the competent authority of a specific topic so that it means that the competent authority uh, is willing to take the responsibility of uh, resolving the case and to to act. So um, it's really important that um, maybe here, uh, like we like we do in Vitawa, we have Audrey as a extension into the central government, so that we can ask or to suggest a specific com competent authority take the, I mean, own the issue. Yeah, but so this is how we connect to the government. And uh, before we find out the competent authority uh, or before the company authority is set, uh, this case is, isn't really can be initiated. So uh, finding a competent authority and he, uh, the authority is also willing to, to take on the issue will be like a prerequisite of uh, the stage one. Yes, so um, this, uh, we use Hackpad as a document, documentation tool to, uh, to record everything, especially the, it's like a meeting, having the meeting, minute, meeting minutes of a uh, mini hackathon at Hackpad. So this is the uh, original screenshot of a uh, proposal of NCII case. So we have the name. Uh, v Taiwan and also mini hackathon in Chinese and the date of their meeting and also uh, some and the content itself um, and after after this those step six steps then we need to choose the right tool for uh, opinion collection so and this is a uh, like an instruction of choosing a tool so if, if the issue is not that clear and the structure is still unorganized, then we can might use police and because police is much uh, liberally open and the stakeholders or the participants get to post their own comments. So it's a good tool to get an idea of what the atmosphere is like uh, in terms of a specific issue. And if the, the air is clear enough, then you can use this course because it's a more organized, uh, like a, it's like a forum. So you can have like a bulletin and you have the topic and the title and a, uh, like the issue and the sub issues and break it down into organized details. So you can use this course, but it's just like the uh, traditional forum. Uh, but yeah, this is for, um, a more organized uh, issue. And, but if you are not sure, uh, you can go traditional, like a online questionnaire. So you can use Lido or Typeform. Uh, but Typeform is not open source, right? I guess so. 
Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, but you need to pay if you want to build professional yeah, version. Uh -huh. Yeah, and um, uh, later we will use Polis as the experiment tool to 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 do the trial trial because I guess it's the most u unusual and the fun one. So uh, we will use it as a default tool to do to perform to perform the experiment. And um, after okay step step eight, uh, we can publish the represent to publish the presentations, documents, research paper made from research team if the competent authority have appointed a specific uh, research team, then uh, the research team may have a presentation or a study or papers. So you can post it on your uh, platform and let the participants uh, to understand uh, what's the background or the legal uh, backgrounds or some other uh, information that they need, they need, to, need to know. So if we have any information uh, pop, uh, made from research team or a competent authority or even the proposer, proposer himself or herself, then we should post it, post it on the platform so uh, all the stakeholders and participants can have the access to these uh, studies or presentations and they can easily understand what might be discussed later. Uh, okay. And then there are the tools. Uh, and here uh, we have police discourse uh, slide on a type form. And these four tools are the most uh, used one on Vitae One. And in here in police, uh, I'll need Pashona to give us a brief introduction on police. And then after after Dashona's presentation, we'll have Su Yang uh, to to tell us, uh, to give us a brief introduction on other tools. So, Darshana? Can we ask questions about the, the process before we jump into the tools or? Yeah, totally. It'll take me a while to set up. Okay, cool. So, okay, my first question is on slide 9.6, which is find out the competent authority. What if you don't find uh, an authority that is willing to en engage? Hello? Uh, from from my own experience, I haven't had this this kind of issue before. Uh, but for NCI case, uh, originally because it was about the criminalization of the actors, so we find that Ministry of Justice is the right competent authority for this case, and they are willing to take the responsibility. But um, because it's uh, a bottom-up proposal, so they don't really have pressure from the top, uh, top uh, high-ranking officials. So I guess this is why it moves kind of slow. I mean, the process moves kind of slow. But after uh, like a year-round uh, process, then uh, this topics began begin to expand. Lot, I mean, the the ranges become broader. So there are maybe more competent authority needed to participate in, uh, including like uh, Ministry of uh, Welfare and, and Health. But um, yeah, I, well, from my own experience, they are all willing to take the responsibility because they do feel, I mean, they feel the need from, from the participants, especially those uh, participating in mini hackathon. Mm -hmm. So, that's what the government will do 
if they do fa in face the pressure from, from the general public. So, Audrey, do you have anything to add? I'll just add that it's a net reduction in risk if they participate early in the mini hackathon mm. um, because the process promised a net re re reduction in uh, labor in time because it's crowdsourced. But uh, the threshold is not just about reducing the uh, cost but also reducing risk. Uh, and the idea of mini hackathon is that individual agencies, they can participate on an individual basis without their minister's approval. Uh, and it's usually seen as a risk-reducing move because it's certainly better uh, to participate at that point rather than, you know, when there's thousands of people on the street. Uh, so, yeah. Mm. Well, yes. Uh, so, what do you mean with research team in the slide, like public, like mm. oh, who creates the research? Oh, okay. Yeah, sometimes the uh, the competent authority will have, but if they originally have already wanted to uh, bring up a proposal, they will also have a like a funding for a research team, and they will appoint a research team to help them do the research work. So it will be like a ally of their their own, the, the ally of the competent authority. Mm. So that's, yeah, that's appointed by uh, the competent authority. So, and also, um, because they are most, they are doing most of their research work, so they are also uh, obli obliged or they need to participate in mini hackathon and let them, let them uh, keep track, um, keep track of what's happening. Yeah, I need to have a deeply involved with the mini hackathon and the participants. Okay. Sorry. Um, I will do a quick run through of Polis, which is one of the the main tools that is used in the VTI1 process. But before I do, I want to sort of put up uh, or share the business card of this incredible person that CS and I met uh, when we were in Taiwan. So this is Lu Chia Hual's uh, business card, and she runs, uh, she's been running participatory um, methods or re researching and implementing them for a very long time. Um, and I think this is, this is sort of very important to remember, um, it says behind every technologist there is and should be much more than mere technology. Behind technology there is a set of values informing as its, its pursuit. Um, and sort of thinking about Polis in this slide, Polis is just a tool, it's a discovery tool that, ca that is incredibly flexible and can be used um, in many different contexts and processes and the processes that, uh, that people choose to implement it in is, is really important, uh, which is something that's really wonderful about the V-Taiwan process. I'm just gonna quickly do, pull up a couple of links, so, to show you what Polis looks like. Um, so this is, the, Polis is a conversation platform, and uh, when participants go on the platform, you can agree, disagree, or pass on sentiments or statements that you see. And then if you feel your sentiment isn't reflected, you can add it in, and then the next set of people uh, get, get to vote on it. Um, moderators tend to put in about 20 statements, and then the conversation just takes off. Uh, usually, you, there are conversations as large as, you know, a thousand statements, mostly generated by participants. So that's one of the nice things about the tool is that uh, participants are actively creating um, the questions or statements that go into the into the conversation. This is an example. This is just a a poll that's embedded into into a website. The the Labour Party had used it to define political agenda. So you see the statement come up, agree, disagree, or pass, and then your own statements. This is the participant view I'm showing you. Uh, what the algorithm does um, once. Uh, once all of the information is collected, it's a giant matrix of 
agrees or disagrees, and then a clustering algorithm to look at how people can be grouped based on, our, on their opinions. And the grouping is not done on any kind of demographic information. It's just purely based on opinions. Um, it's a conversation space that's mapped out and statements that people tend to agree on or disagree on um, are closer together in that space. And participants who tend to agree on the same things or disagree on the same things are also closer in that space. And statements don't, really don't matter. It's the relationship between the, the participants and how they feel about these various things, or the various statements that come up. Um, and then you can see varying number of clusters. Uh, the algorithm also uh, shows participant statements based on participation itself. So if, say I'm the 100th person entering a conversation, the statements that I will see with the highest probability are the ones that have, are new in the conversation, that haven't been answered before, that we do not have any data on, um, you can imagine that this is useful when you have a thousand odd statement conversation. How do you how do you you know decide who gets to see what? So those those are the statements with the highest uh, chance of being seen. The ones with the least priority are the ones that a lot of people have seen, but they're passing on. So it's sort of an indication that maybe it's not a clear statement, maybe it's an irrelevant statement. Um, but then by the time the two hundredth person has come in. The statements that have been seen a lot are no longer being seen a lot, have, haven't been seen as much, and so they bubble up again, and so the conversation, uh, the statements keep moving based on participation. Um, in the meanwhile, there's, uh, while that is happening, there's a real-time report being generated uh, where all of the data is visualized. I'm, I'm pulling up a, a report um, from a conversation run by the Canadian um, Heritage Department. You could see the summary statistics. They were trying to craft licensing around, um, around visual arts. Um, questions that the statement is, is sort of very broad. The topic is on the visual arts marketplace. They solicited information from artists, sellers of art, and then opened it out to everyone else and got their sentiments on, um, on, the, on the art industry. The summary statistics are up here, and then you can see the, the snapshot of the entire conversation. Each dot here is, is a statement, um, and you move from the most divisive statements to the ones with the most consensus, um, and so you can just move across a conversation and get a snapshot of the entire conversation. Um, it's sort of useful to, to see this many times because we don't, we don't realize how much we actually agree on, and, and that's a good place to start a conversation. Uh, so Joe and Stephanie, who are here, ran a conversation in Bowling Green, um, which I could pull up, and they, uh, it was just tell us the problems uh, in our town, and there have been a lot of contentions in the, uh, in the town around social issues, but it was really nice to see uh, for the town folk that they actually agreed on a lot. And so it can be a good place to start saying, hey, we agree, Let's talk about these things and then move to the uh, places where we have disagreements. The, there are a number of different calculations that you can, you can look at, just sort of majority, the usual majority calculation, over 60% felt X, over 70% felt X um, or Y. And, uh, but what is, what is neat is you can also look at uh, how opinions fall between different groups. So once the clustering is done, you could see the opinions that are representative of a particular group of people. So for instance, group A feels, I'm just gonna read out the statements from here, the 50% commission model that galleries employ prevents artists from making a sustainable living. Uh, dead artists don't need opportunities to be seen and sell work, I do, living artists do. So these are, these are sentiments that made this group, um, that were particularly important to this group and separated them out. Uh, from the other group. There's no, there's no fix in the number of clusters, and the clusters uh, are based on the data itself. Uh, you can also put in what's called metadata statements or demographic statements. So these are the statements here. For instance, I create artwork for sale or public exhibition. I identify as a First Nations or an in Inuit person. I'm a trans person. I'm an emerging artist. You could get some idea of demographic information. None of the demographic information is used in the clustering, but it adds a nice layer to interpret data. So for instance, you, we know that group A feels that dead artists don't need an opportunity to be seen. They feel that 50% commission model of galleries employ prevents artists from uh, making a sustainable living. And, and now we can go interpret 
that data by looking at the, the metadata or the demographic information. So if you look, if we look here, we see that most of Group A are actually artists. So they say they create art and sales. So you're like, oh, this is what artists feel uh, about things. Group C felt differently, and Group C didn't really, they, they didn't seem to be involved in the art industry. So it's a nice way to, to kind of inter, interpret which groups of people feel, uh, feel similarly or, or feel particularly about certain things. The other really neat thing uh, you can look at, whether a number of different views or snapshots of conversations where you could look at correlations of, of data. So for instance, Bowling Green, uh, we saw that people who tended to believe that marijuana sentences need to be harsher and prison sentences for marijuana, uh, where marijuana should be criminalized and prison sentences should be, uh, should be harsher, also felt that refugees should learn English, uh, but felt differently about fairness ordinances. So you could, you could sort of see correlations between different, different statements as well. Uh, what, what's, what's one of the really neat calculations here is what's called group-informed consensus. And group-informed consensus is particularly useful when you have a minority group that feels strongly about something. So usually when you look at ma majority opinion in these broad uh, sort of swaths, or 60% believed in, in something, if you have a minority population, and even if you all very strongly believe um, or feel very strongly about something and you come out and force to vote, you're sort of washed out by the majority opinion. But the group informed consensus is calculated in such a way that across different groups, you should see consensus across the, the three different groups. So even if a group is really small, if that group strongly disagrees, it's not a group informed consensus. So these are just various ways in which uh, to look at how, how a population feels about a particular issue, it can be a broader issue, but it's, it is actually really useful to have it on a narrow issue because you can further the conversation on that issue and then move that data into, uh, into in-person conversations. This ab absolutely doesn't remove the need for having in-person conversations or, or iterations, things like that, but it's a great discovery tool. Uh, it's been used in various ways. The Civic Assembly at Bowling Green used it as a virtual town hall. Taiwan uses the tool for uh, crafting legislation or in the discovery phase, and so there are various various users. Um, yep, that's my rundown and full list. Thank you. Um, can I just ask why you call it a conversation? As opposed to survey? Well, I, I feel like the word conversation has a, has a particular meaning. It's something that a few people do with each other. Mm -hmm. It's, it goes back and forth. And this seems uh, inadequate to describe what you're showing us. And I'm also wondering how, in the process of using policy, and maybe we'll get to this later, the information that the, you know, this sort of snapshot of crowd opinion that it's creating, how that gets communicated back to the whole group. Because that's where conversation, you know, it's sort of yeah, like yeah. then the group sees what it's currently thinking and then maybe people change how they think. But to me, the word conversation doesn't adequately map to this. And, I'm, I'm, and if we're trying to tell other people use this, it'll help you have a better conversation. I don't know. I mean, maybe we just don't have the word the, in English for it. So it's a little, we've, we've, we've tried many different combinations of things and actually the way the way we've left it open to whoever whoever it is who's using it to use a, a term that they find most suitable. So dynamic survey, poll has been used. A conversation, because it is it is a back and forth in some way. You could see what other people are are saying. You can you can respond. It's done in these bite-sized ways that people are agreeing, disagreeing, and passing, but it is the kind of information that you get out of some kind of focused group, right? As opposed to giving somebody a set of questions and then just having them respond to those set of questions and you're kind of blocked by what you, what you don't know already. So it's, it's something of a hybrid. I agree, it's not this elaborate. A conversation maybe brings to mind a much more sort of essayist type or a, a Well, in, the, in the case of uh, Remesh, the goal really is to have a conversation between a collective it, made up of many individuals and an individual, or maybe another collective made up of many individuals. Yeah, but, it's but back, what it's I remember, it's, a, it's yeah. like a ranking, like part of that back and forth is that it like keeps comparing different things 
um, and ranking them in various ways. But the information that goes in is not like, the, people are not writing in essays, they're sort of doing something very similar. So this, it, it is, yeah, I agree. That is like, you know, it's not, it's not what we intuitively think of as a conversation, neither is it a survey, neither is it a, a poll, it's like some kind of hybrid, I guess a dynamic survey. And, uh, would be would be some some part, but there was a second question there. Did I miss that? Okay, so I guess that's all. Uh, just just a further note on that. I mean, this is one of the questions we brought to Polis, and you know, I think Parla Polis provides a partial answer, but it's still something that could be developed further. I mean, there, there's a since since Polis can extend across any amount of time you want. I mean, it doesn't have to be like getting a survey call at dinner time and having to answer 20 questions in you know, some fixed period. It, it has the potential to be a deliberative process in itself where people think about the, the statements they've responded to, they come back to it after a few days, they see new ones, they've given. You know, there is that opportunity for deliberation within the context of the sort of duration of the, of the process. Mm -hmm. um, Polis does feed back a certain amount of information about what's going on in the poll, but it's it's quite complex and uh, and it's not it, it's not really oriented toward providing that kind of real time understanding of yeah. how the deliberation is proceeding. Mm -hmm. uh, that was something where we you know we felt we felt like it got a little bit of the way, but could have there, there's more opportunity there to develop. Yeah, definitely, way. it tends yeah. to be a bit a bit dense. I guess this comes back to some of the initial points. How do participants know what is being what is being said and interacting uh, during the conversation? Right? Is that what you're is that what you're asking? That the report is a bit dense, and so how do people who are participating sort of get? Well, certainly the report is is dense, uh, and people aren't you know people are not referring back to the report every time yeah. they engage yeah, with it. Yeah. In fact, that one of the one of our you know conclusions at, at, in the course of our work was that uh, probably people took a, a brief look at the report and. Uh, didn't yeah. really invest the time in digesting it that it would have required to make effective use of it. The one thing you did different was that you had a different visualization than this, and this visualization actually gives people a sense of, oh, I'm the blue dot, and I, like, as I state my opinion, I move into this group or this group, and there's a little bit more of a dynamic participatory feeling. And so that, that actually has this sort of, oh, I can see, okay, maybe I don't inter, I can't see all of the, the layers, but I could see what the majority opinions are for a conversation. I could see what group A or group B is feeling, and this is as you're playing around with it. So there's some amount of some amount of that. Yeah, I think that going that's on. right. And we yeah. we were we made choices that didn't really lead in that direction, but that that's certainly a, an aid to understanding what the conversation dynamic looks like. Yeah, I had a like I remember talking to Shriyang about it in in sort of discussing what the two is and one of the one of the sort of feedback that came out of this is seeing this seeing this view and having sort of your you know participation be represented this way made it feel less of a black box made it feel less of i put in my statements something turns out and tells me oh these are the top statements but these are less it felt a little bit more dynamic yeah um related to this i'm wondering if anyone from the the Taiwan team could write in about the experiment of additional people in the community helping participants in a poll write ever better consensus statements. I like that. <clears throat> statements that gain, so, <clears throat> A role for quote unquote nobodies or people who are trying to help society have a difficult conversation. What you may, there's the opportunity for everybody, you know, a theoretical 100% to participate, but there's also a way, we're, we're talking about adding facilitation into these difficult conversations. And um, this, if the poll were active, we would actually see these opinion cluster shapes move. And it's possible to see which statements are getting uh, a very high rate of agreement across different groups. And um, it's possible to read all the statements. And I had heard of a previous um, experiment, I don't know how long it was, where actually people who were trying to help this conversation move along 
would closely read the statements and try to add in more finely tailored wording to get an ever, ever higher percentage of consensus. Does that ring any bells? Yes. Um. It's very time intensive, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and it's, so polis is introduced as a way to essentially save time so that the moderators can still do it in their part time, right? So that's the original value proposition, it, it, is that in V Taiwan, everybody participate in their spare time as volunteers. And once it grows to more than a thousand people uh, using normal forums, uh, become too time intensive so that people won't actually put in so much time in doing this. Now Polis came in and we said, okay, now we can scale to UberX, uh, scale conversations. So um, there was, as uh, far as I can recall, two uh, topics, but it's not in the V Taiwan process, where in the Polis, there is dedicated full-time staff looking at the comments, try to moderate out duplicate ones, try to put in more like of a common value ones uh, and, and try to get more consensus. But it's extremely time intensive and the person doing it, at least the one that I'm personally involved with, uh, Billy Lin, who is not here, but also a uh, Im important PDS member and GovZero member, um, personally took care of the uh, polis on whether we use caning, that is whipping, uh, to um, to punish drunken driving, and and that is a e petition. Uh, actually, the 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 e petition case was the most number of petitioners uh, in in Taiwan's uh, history, uh, and and we use polis just because there's tens of thousands of people with very wildly different, highly antagonistic, um, divisive, toxic statements, and and then uh, Billy personally went into every statement and tried to get some common value out of it so that it's become more highly functional. But I think he suffered a lot of mental damage because of this <laughs> process and took more than one week to recover. So this is not su uh, suggested to any like new people to this process. It is extremely um, exhaustive even uh, to, to people who have to process essentially to all the different toxic and um, radical and uh, other factions and come up with things that reflects come up value. The other thing, uh, it's CL did the same thing around the uh, capital punishment right after a uh, random killing case. And again, I think he suffered a lot of mental <laughs> uh, uh, pressure um, and trying to moderate a uh, case where, uh, again, um, thousands or tens of thousands of people joined. And that's the two cases that I remember, but both are outside of the VTAMAN process. We try to not inflict that on our facilitators. Yeah. But it is, it is really tricky in that sometimes you can have, like, there were cases where like 7,000 people come on in like a couple of hours and then, and then what do you do, right? It really, well, we, we have built, the, the algorithm is built to churn it out, but then everything else slows down. So you're basically also on the, it becomes it becomes cumbersome, cumbersome on like on the practical end also to move things around. But I, one thing that that would address your question though is if after this like the data is taken and then somebody with either expert knowledge or somebody with an understanding of the issue can parse through that data and then sort of like divide it into myth, fact, you know, infrastructure question, things like that, and then, and then from there take that information and in, it passes in various ways and then that can be moved through different trajectories. And I think that could be like a in-between way. And whoa. Um, in the context of some of the toxic conversations that happen in the US, um, how without the moderator, you know, sort of that kind of tight touching, how Polis deals just innately with that level of toxicity trolling type response, which you're likely to get in a, in a US forum around like I'm talking the NRA kind of conversations. So they have, there is the option to, you could either do a very heavy moderation and only let statements in, like once, once you've looked at it, or you could do the opposite where you can keep a very close eye on it 
and then remove statements as soon as you flag as soon as you flag it as as problematic. And this, uh, Joe and Stephanie had to do. Or, the, the group had to do with Bowling Green, not so much because it is incredibly toxic, but personal information was mentioned in some cases. And so as long as the moderators, I think, are on, on point and watching it regularly, it's possible to, to do that. The problem with, with doing the opt-in part is that you end up, like the, the heavy hand of moderation can end up being a censoring uh, tool where you're like, oh, this is not, this is not an important statement, or this is, it just can, it can become a slippery slope and so it, it is nice to sort of let it be, you know, organically what, what participants want to say and have to say about something. There hasn't been that said, like, people don't seem that nasty in general on this, at least not so far. Um, so for the data and the clustering, how do you figure out uh, the clusters if people agree with similar statements? If so, uh, are you, is it an automated decision-making process to uh, determine the similarities of the statements? Yeah, so it, what, what comes out at the other end, I'm just gonna pull up this report, what comes out at the other end is this, this giant kind of matrix of you have a participant and then all of the statements and whether they agreed or disagreed on the statements and then it's, it's like a dimensionality reduction and then the clustering happens. And the clustering is really, so this, this might give like a good, good impre impression of the clustering. So each of these numbers here are a statement and then statements that are people treated similarly are closer together in this space, which is why you see a lot more kind of like a, a mess in the middle. And then as you move outwards, away from this, this center, you see more and more polarizing statements. So it's, it, it, is a, it is a distance metric in some sense. Mm -hmm. So it's like, is my opinion closer to, to your group or yours, or is it like com different enough that I form my own separate, separate group now? And it's always this, this, this sort of like a comparison. And the clustering happens, uh, happens a lot. So it does, it, it, you can have different clusters and then it does uh, like a confidence interval measure to just keep checking what is the statistically most valid. Oh, sorry. Oh, thanks, I just thought it was really cool, the um, idea of being able to think about the moderation in a sort of range of scales from extreme to sort of loose touch. And I'm wondering the if you're able to detect any patterns or extract any metadata about patterns of moderation and sort of start to help moderators understand if they're expressing bias or if there's any sort of heuristic that they're consciously or unconsciously using and how that influences the sort of trajectory of consensus. is a whole other platform. <laughs> uh, but uh, it is, so the, we, we do it in a, it, well, at least I try to, we do it in a more qualitative way, right? Like this is not, so, some part of like setting up this experiment or process is really working with someone or with, with a group who wants to use it to set up their process. But the Taiwan, like the Taiwan group is way ahead in that, like you've, you've tested out for a very long time, but most, most of the time when people, like are testing the, this out in the beginning, one of us will totally step into their process and be like, oh, this, you know, like from past experience, this may not be the best way to do it or, or that. There's no, there's no actual, this is your measure of bias kind of thing, but there is a, we strongly suggest, like we can't force anyone to do anything, but there has been many, like we strongly, strongly suggest you do blah, so. I just want to note that in, for the Civic Assembly in Bowling Green, we really let our local partners lead in the moderation process. I mean, there's no way to, for us to really understand the nuance between two statements about you know, the traffic circle or something. And they're like, <laughs> totally. these are actually, I mean, there's so many about the traffic circle. So it's like, there's actually two distinct ideas here. There's no way we would have known that. So um, our, our partners were the local newspaper and, um, and a consultant with the, with the local public university. So they were really leading the process and, and Darshna in, you know, consulted and, and so did we. Yeah. That's, how we. that's how we led. It takes a task force, it really does. Like sort of the, the people who know the technology, the, the experts 
and then the sort of like the person who can step back or the group who can step back and and be the uh, the unbiased presence maybe. But yeah. So this isn't so much of a question, but more perhaps like a statement or an opening for a conversation, since I think what's really interesting is that we have a lot of people who have used it at different scales here. Um, and also maybe touching a little bit back to Micah's point, or Mika's point, excuse me, about how do participants engage. But in having worked with Polis, at least personally for myself, what I find useful is this ability to sort of start to identify where the opinions are, who those stakeholders might be, what, what information might not be clear enough, uh, what information like we might need to provide more resources around, uh, but it's definitely also very clear that there has to be some layer of digestion mm -hmm. around this. Um, even like the viz to some participants might be too confusing, and so how do, you, how do you message that to people, or how do you help them understand different parts of, of the report? So, uh, um, yeah, I'm, I guess I, I opened this up too for folks that are using it, like what, in what areas was it helpful and like where did it get you and then what did you need to do after that? Because I think that it's, it's not like, you're not gonna use Polis and expect to be like, great, I have a complete solution. It's, it's a tool. Also to that point, it has, Polis hasn't sort of maximized its like sort of capability as, a, as an open source tool, right? The more people who look at the data, the more people who generate uh, or who can contribute the, the, the tighter a community you have, the more you can dig into those things. Um, but yeah, definitely. Um, but sorry, the question was to you though. We definitely could have used more time to translate and you know, hopefully visualize the, the results for the Bowling Green community because after we ran the, on the polis, I think it was 10 days, we had um, uh, a, a public forum, a town hall. Uh, where we had some local officials, local and regional uh, people come in and speak to the issues that were surfaced by the, by the process. Um, and because it's such a, I think there were 2,000 participants and 600-ish statements, so it was just a lot of information to get through. And it's, it's nearly impossible to digest, I think, all at once. So I think us having some more time to draw useful comparisons between uh, statements that are that were you know surprising you know across the more conservative and uh, progressive groups would have been helpful and I think it would have um, they were just kind of subtle subtle and surprising things that came out of it that we could have drawn out that would have been um, useful to the conversation hello I, I had a question with Polis as an engagement vehicle, uh, what does, do they help define what success should be when you run an engagement on the platform? And the reason why I ask that is because if we look at these different ways of participating in government or society at large, you know, we always talk about voter turnout, or even mm -hmm. when you're putting out a survey, you have response rate. So how do you know, I mean, I think there are different types of numbers that have been brought out in terms of number of statements or number of people who participate in the conversation. Like, does Polis recommend a statistically significant part of the population? Do they help, are you mm -hmm. supposed to put an input in of the target market you're hoping to reach and then they help you calculate how much of that you accessed? I'm just curious to know because sometimes I think something happening is seen as success, but I'm curious to see whether that has been pushed further with this platform. Yeah, so this is, th this is really important in that it is, it is like sort of brings back to the layers around, around the platform, right? I'm not so like sort of personally not so worried about numbers per se, but diversity, right? So if you want to get all of the voices in a conversation, you want to make sure that you are not just advertising or tapping into one, one group, right? All of the people who need to be in the conversation or who you, who you want information from um, should, be, should be in the conversation. And I think that is like almost before, because it takes 10 minutes to set this up and you know <laughs> release it, but then there's all of these layers before. Like, okay, what do you want to run the conversation on? What is your objective? Is it to, to solicit feedback on a particular issue? Is it a broader, is it a broader tell me what your problems are in the town? And then based on that, you say, I need to reach these groups. How do I reach them? 
Um, the Bowling Green example was really good in that the partner organization, there's a, a newspaper that's very widely read um, in, the, um, in the town, and so you know, they sent it out through their mailing list, but they also solicited, they went to church groups, if I'm not mistaken, they went, like, they went to like places where like, could, oh, like opium addiction, like they went, they went to like a number of different, they made sure that they like, they, they sent it through their international mailing lists, and so those kind of making sure that you're, you're going through the channels that or trying to reach people through all of the channels you have available, I think is, is really important because otherwise it's the same voice over and over. Yeah. The, the methodology behind the outreach was really to uh, target a representative um, swath of civic groups mm -hmm. and, and reach out to the leaders of those groups and, and get them to basically you know, enlist their, their communities. Also, outcomes sometimes is much clearer. If it leads to legislation, then there, boom. Um, but also, ad otherwise, it can sometimes get stuck in in a little bit of a loop because this is like like mentioned before. There's there's a lot of information here. How are you turning through it? How are you moving it through the next step? What's your what's your objective? It's it's really important to scope it. Just to continue on that question and thread, how has the V Taiwan community done direct marketing or outreach to solicit a broader uh, base of engagement? case by case, like in the UberX case, what we care about, again, is diversity, right? So we settled on the URL of the police poll, but we did not publish it um, until all the stakeholder groups, uh, including the ministries, the taxi companies, the major few ones, the unions of taxi drivers and Uber, uh, we agree on a time of uh, when do all the stakeholders receive the URL. And, and then we sent out the URL, only like me knew the URL at the time. <laughs> and then at that agreed time, everybody gets that URL and they spread it through their line channels, through their WhatsApp channels or whatever channels. Um, and the importance here is that when you get in, you both find that there are people who think just like you and there are like three quarters of people who don't think like you. And, and bo both are important. If you find a conversation that it's a echo chamber, then um, your, your participation or contribution is naturally lower because uh, there's less chance to go across the aisle and find common values. But if you uh, start with a very diverse picture and people gradually converge to the middle, there is a satisfying um, you know, uh, theme to it. Uh, but that's because it's already a large controversy in the society, in the main jur journalism. Um, there's, you know, media dedicated to, to advocate for one particular position. But in other cases where police is used, um, like the NCII case, it was seen as a very niche to topic that maybe only three NGOs care about. And it, it, so, so the main point here is amplifying to find people who have their own media, to have their own brand on social media or whatever, and try to use those channels to amplify uh, this. And uh, diversity is, again, important, but it's not so much about balance, but about how can we go across different uh, NGO and self-media, civil media groups uh, to make this into a more commonly um, aware topic. So again, it differs case by case, but the most important thing is that every week the diversity need to increase rather than decrease, I guess. And just wondering about specific examples, like w did anyone do print media, did, like postcards or flyers or billboards? Like ha how, at, at what scale has um, the Polis platform been advertised to the general audiences across the island in Taiwan? Right, so um, there's several things. In V Taiwan, the main um, venues or vectors of spreading this is up to the initial stakeholder groups, right? So the stakeholder groups who participate earlier in the mini hackathons or in the agenda setting meetings, they understand that they're responsible to find what, whatever appropriate values. They could be, you know, billboards, or there could be QR codes, there could be whatever um, that is most effective in their own mobilization um, camp. And we don't interfere with that, but we, we just become aware of that, that that's the most important part. There are other places where we use polis that's outside the VTAWAN process, like if it's in the e-petition uh, process, there's some other way to reach to the petitioners. Uh, we'll cover more on that tomorrow. Uh, but in the VTAWAN process, it's mostly on the stakeholder groups to do their own mobilization, and we don't um, 
actually we can't uh, interfere with that uh, as long as they um, they are fair, like they get a URL at the same time. The seed questions, the initial statements into the police system is co-determined by the stakeholders. Uh, we, we care about that balance, but coming uh, to the mobilization, we don't instruct or prescribe specific mobilization methodologies. Just re related to that, actually, when, when tied to a physical event, sometimes it can be really, really effective. Like when the Women's March, for instance, it was tied to the giant Women's March that happened, and then you know you already have people coming out for the march. It spread through those channels, and then like, if you're already mobilizing people for something, and you're that you can piggyback on things, and that can be useful. So yeah. So just a note on this, since it was part of our lengthy discussions about what kind of community we were trying to reach. Uh, you know, I mean, the thing we excluded at the outset because it would have been much more demanding than we had the time or resources to, uh, to commit to was constructing a representative panel that would have some statistical validity at the end of the day in terms of its representativity of the community. Mm -hmm. a, lot of a lot of polling methodologies rely on that for their, for their authority. It, it's certainly something you could do in the context of a polis uh, process, but it, very demanding, especially in a community that doesn't have kind of pre-built <laughs> yeah, uh, panels for, for this sort of polling. Um, we opted not to do that and in fact sort of tore down all the barriers to participation that might have allowed for different kinds of uh, demographic data. We'd, so we, ultimately we don't know exactly who responded to our poll. Uh, we did do quite a bit of outreach but uh, and could have done more, but then doing more is never necessarily enough because you don't know what, <laughs> even then, what you're what groups are in or outside of your outreach strategy. What we can say at the end of the day is that, um, you know, for some issues that were extremely divisive, that appear to line up with fairly uh, commonly understood political distinctions, uh, for example, immigration turned out to be one of the most divisive issues in the survey. Groups that disagreed dramatically about immigration agreed nonetheless about a whole range of other issues. So that's, that's the kind of, you know, in, in, internal insight that isn't reliant on the construction of a representative sample and that was the kind of thing that we felt we could do given the time and resources we had available to us. Everyone hates traffic. Traffic, hate of traffic ties us together as a, as a species. Yes, yeah, so, but traffic, traffic's the most, you know, yes, traffic. And, uh, but you know, th there were some non-trivial no, commonalities sure. too, right? <laughs> well, we always give this traffic example because we were so, so shocked by it. But there was almost complete consensus on issues of trans government transparency and accountability, on uh, local development and zoning issues. I mean, things that you know, form the basis of a very substantial consensus around you know, issues over which the local government has some control. Now, people then disagree about immigration and uh, you know, drug sentencing and I mean, a variety of other things, but uh, it's, that, it's that kind of non-intuitive internal split that for, for me was the most interesting set of results in the poll. quickly um, finish with our other uh, alternative tools we use on this, this very beginning uh, stage um, uh, when we curate the, the issue on VTRAN's website. So uh, apart from using polis, we also have other tools such as, uh, um, I think in the beginning we showed that, Discourse and Slido and Typeform. And the way how we chose between how we choose between these four different tools, it actually depends on the community of Vitawan itself, and uh, also depends on how much material we have already in our hands. So for conversations or issues like uh, in the very beginning stage and very controversial or just very unsure and unclear what they have, we will choose police for sure. And but it's also a decision by the community. But for uh, uh, issues which is which has uh, more materials already or more uh, rough direction from the beginning, we tend to choose this course, uh, this kind of, it's an online uh, forum. You can uh, put different directions into different categories and you can have a description on top. 
So this, the interface of the, this course look like this. You can have, um, oh, we can draw. You can have this part as a description of your issue you want to talk about, and uh, you can curate a few different issues uh, or different uh, categories uh, inside uh, on, on this, on this uh, interface. Okay, yeah, and here you can also uh, add your users. So for example, when we launch a case, we uh, uh, oftentimes ha have um, a contact person who is in charge of answering all these questions or point people to answer all these questions on this forum already. So it would be handy if you can just add this contact person uh, and then there will be, uh, like, timely come to the forum and answer or reply. Um, so this is one. Uh, yeah, let's talk about the add. Yeah. And another tool we use is Slido. We'll now quickly uh, run Slido in, like, five minutes. We're going to, like, decide what topic we'll, we'll, we'll use for the rest of the, the workshop. So Slido is an is a online um, um, survey tool, I think. For the, it has two main features. One is for question, uh, making questions. Another one is for polling. So we'll be trying this one uh, very, very soon. <clears throat> and another one is Typhoon. Um, I think Typhoon, is, it's maybe many people heard of Typhoon already. It's an it's, uh, online questionnaire uh, system that, is, has very, that has very beautiful design. So I think that the good thing about using Typhoon is to kind of just, just uh, attract people to uh, enjoy the process of uh, answering all these questions. So if we have an issue that has so many questions for people to answer from the beginning, I would definitely choose Typhoon. Okay. Okay, so uh, we are going to move on to exercise one and we will take a poll and we will uh, pick one question, uh, one topic, one topic. So please uh, go to the hack folder. Uh, there is a Slido link. It's called Slido link. Here, uh, just right below opening slides. There's a Slido link, and then after you are in uh, the Slido page, then you get to choose. Uh, Get to choose uh, which which dis uh, which topic you would like to discuss about. But um, hold on. Avros, yeah, uh, is there a room or a code for the Slido? Not everyone has the hack folder right now. Is there like a oh. code that we can get to? Oh, I don't have a short URL. Zero. 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 Yeah, okay, yeah, just go to slido.com and then enter uh, the event code. 0611. Yes, uh, just the date. 06611. Okay. Huh? What do you mean? Uh, just go to the slido.com. And here you can enter your code event, uh, event code, and enter 0611, and then you get to the page. And um, there are two topics. One is cyberbullying, and the other one is data integration. So, and here I need you to pick one topic that interests you the most. And here are some inspiration questions for you, like, for cyberbullying, you can think about what's the definition of cyberbullying and who can be counted as victims or the actors or the potential victims. And uh, you can think, we can, or discussing about how we can prevent cyberbullying or should we regulate cyberbullying. Um, and also, are social networks responsible for the rise of uh, cyberbullying? And how should teachers address cyberbullying? These are just some. Um, uh, questions for you to think about uh, if we if cyberbullying is the topic that we're going to discuss about and also data integration um, we can think about what's what's the definition of open data or my data so what's the difference between open data and my data or should we combine data from disparate sources uh, how do we protect privacy 
Uh, should we regulate data integration between public sectors and private sectors? Uh, should the government offer a data integration service for free? Or we should charge? Uh, or should we, uh, who should be responsible for data breach? You know, these are also some questions for you to think about. So, uh, so we have, because we have limited time for preparation, so we only have two questions for you. Uh, please choose what interests you. Uh, then we can, okay, so does that, have anyone yet voted yet? And also, um, because when, when you went to the registration table, we have the colored dots for you. So uh, you were secretly uh, <laughs> appointed as, as different stakeholders. So these are the colors standing for, and I, I don't have the orange, orange color, so <laughs> I use white. Uh, orange uh, represent, uh, stands for a citizen. So if you are, if you had the red color, uh, red color dots on your name tag, you will be the stakeholders of, from the academics like scholar, professor, um, or sometimes lawyers or some experts, expertise with yeah. And the yellow dots means the business, corporates, or private sectors, and the green dots means the government. And the orange dot means uh, the citizen or civil society or the community contributors. And the blue dot would mean the online participants. So it would be the remote. And uh, later on uh, in the in, in, in consultation meeting, uh, we will uh, have you uh, be seated according to the dots, the color of the dots, which means the different stakeholders. So from now on, after we take take the topic poll, um, you might need to be someone else's shoes to think and to post comments according to the position you take. All right? Okay. And if you don't have a colored dot, we'll get you one. Oh, okay. Looks like... <laughs> Uh, CS? Change your vote. CS? How many participants do we have for now? How many participants do we have for now? Or we have uh, uh, 19? Has Just everyone voted? I don't know if everyone. If you haven't voted, you might be able to tip the vote. <laughs> Yeah. So I guess the topic will be data integration. And this topic will be used for both day one and day two. So uh, tomorrow we will also use data integration as the topic to host the whole process, to, to lead the whole process for day two. Okay. Am I charging my phone? So after the topic poll, then we will go on to, yeah, well, the, the exercise one will be like like a, um, pretending, pre, that pre, we all pretending that we have a, like a mini hackathon, so we decide which topic we'll like to discuss about for the later, for, for on, on V-Taiwan. So yeah, so we just uh, finish our stage one proposal stage so we have selected the topic based on our consensus. 
and then we move on to stage two. Yeah, but I do, I, I have did the work for you, like the name, the title of the topic, or you also like to think about it better, like data integration, do you think it's a good name or title, or you have different ideas on maybe like open data integration or some other issues, uh, some other name or topic that would you think what suits the topic better than data integration. Yeah, okay. Uh, so just pretend <laughs> a play, like a play, doing a play like that uh, we just done, we're done with the stage one. And then we move on to stage two, which is the uh, opinion, on opinion, and we will do the online opinion collection. And also we will use the poly as the default tool. And for, so do, to do, to initiate the online opinion collection, uh, step one is to set up a good guidance. So if it's police, then uh, we need to have a guidance on the welcome page, and you need to tell the participants or uh, uh, any online users to let them know that how to use this tool. And we have, and in Chinese, in, on v one we use the, uh, I translated it into the English, and uh, we also, we, so the step, so the first one will be, we always starting with, I think, like I think uh, data integration is bad idea, like keep it simple and short. So like uh, second, uh, every comment is independent, so there's no need to reply others' comments. It's, so it's different from uh, like the posts on Facebook that you get to reply others' comments, but in here you get just, you can't just agree, disagree, or pass. Yeah, some, some of you might have already quite familiar with police, but there are some not, haven't used police before, so I'll just, I'll still need to explain it. And the third, uh, you need to tell the online user that post opinions separately, so do not have too many points at one comment or, or in one statement. So you, you can say that I think data integration should be a free service because I think data integration is really good. But this is probably uh, can be contained uh, containing two different statements. So you better tell, um, be, uh, once the count statements are too long, then the other, uh, other online users cannot simply just agree or disagree. So you have to keep it simple. You need to tell the online user, you keep it simple and one sentence uh, should be plain and clear. And also do not use question mark because it should, be, should not be a question. It should be a, a positive or a negative statement instead of a question. Yeah, so this is uh, the guidance that we have on VTaiwan to tell people how to use, how to uh, use the uh, polis. And also for other tools like polis, discourse, decide on Typeform, uh, we need to have a introduction on welcome page. So uh, the introduction can be edited or written by the facilitator or by the editor or by the proposer, those who are uh, familiar with the topic itself. So uh, we need to use the plain language, so you have to be short, so uh, you can grab people's attention quickly. So, because in, I mean, in digital era, people's attention are really hard to keep. And the content itself has to be friendly for all, and like, you can start it uh, with a, a big news or controversial news, like big events, so people uh, get to know the topic quickly. And you have to explain the purpose and the use of the results so they can feel safe or somehow feel comfortable with what they are going to post or what they are going to uh, maybe have some data recorded by the tool you use. And also describe or oh, what's the next process so they know that okay, after this police survey, then maybe uh, there will be a uh, mini hackathon or there will be a consultation meeting and they will know that their result won't be just in vain. So they can know, they can, they understand that this is uh, valuable and their opinions are valuable. Um, and for police, because it's open and um, we don't just, uh, I mean, you have to have some seed comments to 
to strike up the conversation. Otherwise, people will just jump in the page and then they, they see nothing and maybe they probably don't know how to use it, so they just exit and, and quit. So you have some C comments there and left them to press agree or disagree and they will somehow know how to play the game. Yeah, so, and here are the C comments for NCII. Uh, we are, we were generally focusing on the definition of the, uh, what, the, the definition of intimate images. So you can see that uh, we try to have many types of, or po possible potential uh, scene or types of what bodily intimate images should be like. And you can also say some plan, just like, like I said, uh, I think uh, the government should be responsible for, for the data breach. Okay, that's it, just plan and simple. And uh, step forth, uh, this is just for discourse, but well, because uh, we, have, we have led the uh, authority in Taiwan, they let them be obliged to reply within seven days on this course. So whenever there is a topic and people have posted comments and the editors think that, okay, this topic belongs to which component authority, and then we tag the component authority and they, are, they need to reply within seven days. Yeah, so, and each component authority has their own account on this course, so they, they can't say that they didn't know they can say that they don't know and they will get notification. So this is for discourse uh, on VTaiwan. And then step, step five, ask for contributions in the survey. This is very important um, for all the tools because, well, you have already collected so many comments and you uh, imagine that you uh, put lots of efforts and you attract so many uh, participants and you don't want them to just go away and you don't know who they are. So in the survey, uh, you need to have some questions for them and ask whether the participant is willing to publish their own opinions uh, anonymously or not, uh, or and ask um, whether the participant is willing to become an interviewee or they would like to participate in the consultation meeting or not. and ask for some suggestions or some candidates or interviewees that they may be uh, familiar with, like if, uh, and then you can expand your connections and also an opt-in or sub subscribing the email from VTaiwan or other platform uh, so that you can uh, send more invitation of uh, other uh, issues through, through uh, this list of emails. But I know that GDPR, because of GDPR, so we might to be careful with the European citizen if you have collected their emails or names or other personal information. And uh, we believe that at least we need a month to run the online opinion collection. So for all the tools, we uh, run for at least a month. So we try to draw more attention during the month uh, like you put, uh, like you re have new release, or you have some messages on some line uh, on the networks or social medias, or updates on social network, and just try sp to spread the link as much as possible, and keep records by using screenshots for police, because well, this is for the older version of police that I kind of lost track of uh, the origin uh, at a specific date. So this is a reminder for me to uh, have the screenshots for a specific date so that I understand the, f the formation or uh, the changes between uh, throughout different stages of police. And then uh, after the online opinion collection ends, uh, you need to publish the report and including the raw report and the secondhand report or the secondary report, because the report will be the material for upcoming mini hackathons and also consultation meeting. So after you have the raw material, you need to, we, we up, upload it on Vita One immediately 
and the material will should be thoroughly discussed at mini hackathon and let the participants to figure out what the next step should be, either initiating one more round if the result is not clear enough or uh, or we can't find a rough consensus uh, by analyzing the report, then we might need to initiate another round of online opinion collection or if we have reached a at a, uh, at to a certain level of rough consensus, then we can move on to consultation meeting based on the report we have. And remember to, because we have already uh, have a competent authority, one or two or more, plural, then we need to submit the report, including the raw or the secondary reports to the competent authority to let them also keep track of what's happening. Yeah, the, so that's the stage two, the uh, the opinion stage. And uh, we can try, just use the data integration. And Darshana, yeah, she will uh, initiate from scratch to open up a new police, police page. And then we will just use data integration as the experiment to have, to run through the stage two, online opinion collection. Okay. So uh, the title should be data integration or anyone have any kinds of ideas or comments that we should have other kinds of title to instead of data integration? Or do you all agree that data integration is a great title? Well, if you, the title is open data, then stakeholders will now understand what, what, what this you are going to discuss, like o open data then. But yeah, sure. Uh, it could be a title that kind of uh, summarizes the problem, mm -hmm. or what's yeah. at stake a little bit better. So maybe you want to narrow down the scope or you want just like uh, yeah. the, the mm, legitimacy of data integration or something else. <laughs> oh yeah, sure. So if it helps, think about it as this is the first thing that someone would see when they would come to your poll. So ask yourself, do you understand what data integration means? If you were to get to a page and someone's like, I want your opinions about data integration, does that? If folks wanna, yeah. We can also yeah, narrow down the scope, uh, like maybe have it more uh, focused. Well, I'm happy to also, if people wanna like popcorn out ideas, I'm happy to write them so we can just like get some brainstorming about what folks thought when they were voting on data integration and what actually interested you about this. So I'll, uh, I'll just write notes over here and folks can shout out. Uh, I would love to see discussion around a municipal version of the general data protection regulation that was passed in the uh, EU. So, uh, hyper-localized GDPR. Uh, for those who don't know what that means, it's more or less making sure that um, data protection is by, done by design and by default. Uh, strategies for getting government to use open data standards. Nathan has 
Uh, just data portability for you know your consumer data. So what would it look like to have an API to move your data from one electronic medical record system to another, or a different set of applications, your credit data or something? You know, even just switching banks, like the switching costs are almost impro impossibly high, just because we can't port all of our payments over. You know, like so that kind of portability. How to make data from different agencies or different governments more interoperable or useful by applying data standards or other techniques? Did you say that your topic is a subset of one of the the, the topic that Jason mentioned? Yeah. 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 Just open data standards and mm -hmm. interoperable standards. Yeah. Sure. I think from the perspective of, of, a, of a broader topic, um, maybe the phrasing is data protection or data privacy rather than data integration. Data ethics. I like that too. I would also recommend using the term city data or public city data rather than open data, because not everyone's familiar with that term. All right, so what are the topics we have? Strategy for... So I'll move from the bottom. We've had a, a suggestion to rethink this as data protection or data ethics instead of data integration. Um, how to make data more interoperable uh, within government. Uh, data portability, like APIs or consumer data, or this could also tie into that, that other question. Um, strategy for city data or public city data standards um, and municipal version of GDPR. I don't know, maybe. maybe there's like a... Well, it seems like, it seems like we have two to three subsets. Mm -hmm. One is the privacy, one is the standards. Standards and interoperability might be able to be... I haven't done much on data. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like a great opportunity to whittle this thing down, right? So we, it seems like we have two uh, subsets. One of them is about data protection, privacy, and ethics for individuals and the other one seems to be about how institutions, government institutions can manage data in a way that is more useful for the public. Is that, is that a, uh, a fair assessment? Yeah, this privacy and then making it accessible. I would, the two big buckets? I think so. Yeah. Should we, should we go with one versus the other? This seems like an opportunity for a poll. <laughs> Just show of hands would be fine. Um, Quick question of, have we agreed on the focus being at the municipal and city level? Because it seems like there's consensus there, but if there is, mm -hmm. I want to just state it overtly. A show, a show of hands if folks are okay keeping this at the, the city level, answering to Cordelia's question. Anyone not okay with it? The, the data privacy Rough though veers away from the data integration question that you first posed, right? Does it, does it subsume it? Data privacy is good? Data privacy is kind of broad. Yeah. So, I mean, in what context? Um, data privacy could be, I mean, the general protection of privacy. I mean, like, um, I mean, even including the physical space or virtual space or privacy, I mean, in American law, it could be very broad, I mean, against the government or against the private sectors. So in here, uh, I think we need to be careful of what data privacy is. I mean, it's a really broad term. Yeah. 
So. Uh, our on V Taiwan data integration is uh, to to facilitate the integration or sharing of data among public sectors departments or between uh, the private sector and the public sectors. So it's I mean the the public sector would be uh, the necessary uh, stakeholder of data exchange. But whether it's with the stake uh, private sector or it's with a, a, among different apartments or like federal and local, so it's it's all already very broad. But if it's data privacy, then it will be even broader. Would you say that's two and four on the list here? Strategies for city data data standards for government and and or how to make data more interoperable. Yeah, then we need to have a good name, like a sh short name. Mika, you've got your hand up. Well, just as one of the people who voted for cyberbullying. Um, uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I am more interested in spending the next 36 hours thinking about privacy than I am about data interoperability, which is very dry. And if you're not very technical, may also be a little bit difficult to engage with. Whereas privacy feels like something we all can have an opinion on, and the point is to see how you work through different opinions. Um, so. I agree. Seems like a lot of motions for that. Do you have a question or a way that you I, I, I wonder if Noel could say a little bit more about how it's a very specific policy question you, you're making. It, can you flesh that out a tiny bit more? I think it helps to have a specific, you know, the way, as I understand the V Taiwan process has worked, there was a very specific question, how should we regulate Uber X? So is there a, how should New York City better protect the privacy of its residents? Is that a... Or maybe how should cities protect citizen data, or like the private, like yeah. citizen data, or the privacy of the residents? Mm -hmm. so re how how like can it help regulate or control uh, an individual's pr digital privacy? I, I like more along what Mika was phrasing it. Um, you know, how can New York City help ensure uh, digital privacy protections of its you know, residents. Well, I'm curious how the V Taiwan process works when after a poll and there's a clear majority for one thing and then people with microphones start saying something else and then people start deciding to do something that I'm gonna, I'm else. gonna, what, what, I'm gonna what pass on that, that? that question for now because I think that we've seen in the V Taiwan process that the questions are brought to these meetings and they're discussed so we're kind of like trying to consense around a question here in a different way than their process. Also. And I think, uh, Devin, just to be honest, I think we're just rephra trying to rephrase uh, a counter statement to see if we can have some uh, have clarity. How about policing? Treated as a survey, we could. I mean, if you're looking for a narrower version of this question, that might be kind of fun to engage with. How about? Uh, well, we're looking for a sweet spot, right? Nothing too narrow, but, but not at all. Mm -hmm. yeah. Looking, looking for that sweet spot between like what is this not what is the solution to this narrow problem, but but a broader conversation on. I think data privacy, government use of data, all all of these all of these things work at the city level. Yeah. So How does government better protect citizen data? Fang, you want to chime in since this is related to you too? How to best From use? The government. So how can government best use data? Would that cover privacy and sharing of data? Is that why? I think so. I think it's a broad one. Broader one? Would that, would that be a catch-all bucket that, that works for everyone? How does government better 
utilize and protect data at the city level or citizen data? Yeah? Thank you. Okay. Yes, protections. With both, not just protect, but also like utilize yeah. data in an effective way. Okay, how, we have. How does the government yeah. ensure? How can the government uh, use and protect? Use, use and protect. Yeah. Citizen use data, would that, is that phrasing okay? No? You want, want, want the word, sorry? Ah, local resident data, yes, yes. Si yeah, so maybe city government protect resident data? Um, use and protect resident data? City government? Resident. resident. So not local. So how, how can city government use and protect resident, resident data? The data of residents, residents data, yeah. So how can maybe, how can? How can? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this okay, is, this like is, yeah, this is exactly what we generally have at Mini Hackathon. People just throwing their own opinions and yeah, exactly what we have at Mini Hackathon. And it, sometimes to, it takes around like more than two or three hours, just all this confirmation again and again with also with uh, some public officials. Yeah. Do people fight? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's a yes. <laughs> Are you happy, Devin? Can we review it? It's a little blurry. <laughs> what does it say? Uh, how can the city government use and protect resident data? Residents' data. Yes. All right. <laughs> Thanks okay. for making me the arbiter here. <laughs> um, okay. Now that we have that, we can... Maybe just, I mean, if we could spe specify if we just want to pick a, s a specific type of data that the city has. Like, how can, we, how can the city protect the data that people give it for the IDNYC? Or how can the city... That's some, very some, narrow. Some, well, I think something narrow, maybe, maybe that's too narrow. Maybe that's too narrow. But I mean, I think that if we don't do something but where we specify, then it's like, what data does the city even have? you know, is a question that I think most people here, I mean, I, I, I spend time thinking about this stuff, I don't really know. I agree, the problem there though, if you make it really narrow, is you lose people who are not interested in that, like, specific okay. bucket. You opened a rabbit hole, Noel. Um, That's right. Yeah, let's, let's go with this. We, we can narrow it as, as we, go, we go down. Um, okay, so this is, this is what, what a moderator view of, of Polis um, looks like, and um, here's the topic. You have you have a space for description. You can either put it in here or embed it on on a larger website. Uh, I, I might have an example somewhere. Um, something like that. You can write your own text and and embed it in there, um, and then so each. Let's, let's go through the settings first. So visualization, and then there are various ways in which you can, you can get participants to engage. So you can either require, <laughs> thank you. You can, you can require that, that all participants sign in with Facebook or, or Twitter, so you get some kind of authentication information. It's not usually advisable because that might sort of restrict uh, some people, so you can, you can kind of leave it open. Um, more, there are a number of different moderation, moderation settings. Okay, do you want me to expand this? Yeah, there. Um, strict moderation means that it's an, it's an opt-in version, so all of the statements are are not approved until the more. So every single statement needs moderator approval or you can do the other way. Have it automatically go in and then have moderators remove it, remove it out. Uh, the authentication is what, what I mentioned, which 
do you, ha do you require them to have Facebook or Twitter, uh, log into Facebook or Twitter first before, uh, before participating? So visualization is on prompts. Uh, this one. Oh yeah, require author. Thank you. Um, okay, and then there's a space to submit submit a comment. Um, so does anyone want to come up with uh, with a comment? If we are seeding it with a couple of statements about how can the city government use and protect residents' data. But we should, so what one, I feel that, yeah? yeah? That's one way to put it, so that they know yeah. it's important for people to know that it's your sentiment, um, that New York City, it's also um, NYC, let's just, it's also useful to, to, have, to have the whole thing spelled out, not the acronym, so that anybody who wants to look it up or learn more, um, has that so yeah what do you want to say yeah actually that would be that would be a better um there this is also where oh, devon disappeared this is where the what was devon's statement about about link was it link nyc was it something else sorry Ah, ID NYC. Okay, so well, what was his? I feel. I forget. Well, we'll wait for him to come back. Any other statements? Anyone wants to add? This is just to see. Yeah, here, see, sir. Um, do you kind of know what data is being collected from you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I. Th uh, Data is being collected on me by the city. Or I know. Yeah. I know. You, I know. Yeah. But I know would be, so I know, okay, what the people are saying. All right, I see. So this is not so much an opinion, it's almost a, it's like some kind of a metadata statement, right? People who know or don't know. So that we can mark it as mark it as that. Um, yep. All right. I think the city can't be trusted to protect the data. Sorry. I think the city cannot be trusted to protect my personal data. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna put these in for now. And then you can, uh, what you can do is access this through the bit.ly, so there's a, and then submit, vote and submit your own. So it is, it's, it's up there. It's bit.ly slash vtaiwan dash workshop. So if you go there, you should see this, essentially. And so now what you can do, if you have a statement and we didn't get to you, if you scroll down a bit, you can add your statement here, and it'll, yep. Oh, I, just have a question about, uh, I had a question about phrasing, like what, what's the implication of phrasing a statement like uh, the city cannot be trusted versus the city can be trusted? Like, I feel like that might have ramifications for, um, like people can be primed to respond in a certain way through the language. Yeah. Um, so what kind of, like considerations or, or is there any, I mean, it looks like the interface doesn't really offer much in terms of um, guidance on framing. Yeah, it, so it, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter, but maybe positive is, it sets a, a better tone. Do you have a, is positive is better, right? Yeah, so in, in general, it seems like positive is, is the way a positive tone would be better, which is why your seeded statements are, are important because it kind of serves as, a, as the norms or the, 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 the tone you set. So when people come on and they see these statements are in a, in a positive tone, then they tend to also put in statements with a positive tone. <laughs> uh, okay. 
The bit.ly is vtaiwan-workshop back there. I have a quick question. Um, is, is the question or statement submission going to be open to the public without any sort of um, like process for applying to be able to make a statement? And if, if not, then how do you prevent people who are on there to like incite um, discontent from going and doing that? Yeah, so the, the, the core setup is just, you know, open, but you could put it behind a login screen or an authentication wall or something like that. Uh, or you can whitelist people and then, and then allow only those people to, to access it. But a lot of the times it is, it is open and if somebody, you know, have you had problems where, where particular participants have, have caused trouble? We only have collected some comments that have been uh, that were too long, so it's hard for the participant to to uh, to press agree or disagree. But we don't have I haven't had seen uh, like discontent or other bad or yeah other bad words. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, and you can moderate statement by statement. You don't need to to moderate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here. Yeah. Show them how to moderate. Right. Good point. Okay. Where is the backstage? Here. Um, so you can go in. I'm showing you the in, insides of it. This is the topic, and then you can go into moderate, and here are all of the statements, um, and you can you can moderate in or out these statements. So I say accept. I think data on Yankees fans should be sold to private companies, but not data on Mets fans. <laughs> or why not? Um, so you can you can do it like I'm doing it. Is like just people say, yeah. Um, so if someone wrote something that you're kind of unsure about, uh, is there any way to ask them? Uh, I know that there are people who are anonymous, and mm-hmm. some people are not. Uh, is there another way of engaging in that conversation of saying, hey, what do you mean? If people sign in using Facebook or Twitter, then, then there's a way to identify them and maybe further those conversations. But if it's an, on, it's an anonymous user, that's, that's hard. Uh, also, it's not, it's not threaded. So if somebody has a statement, you can't, you can't respond to that particular statement and say, oh, tell me more on this and then start a separate thread. That's kind of where the past unsure comes into play. Like if you're just not sure what they meant in that moment, then that becomes a past unsure. And as Darshana explained, like if too many of those questions, like if that question is uncertain for so many people, then it's gonna fall below. Um, The other way that, the other thing that you can do is if you think there's a way to rephrase that statement into a way that's clearer, where you're like, oh, if it was phrased like this, it would be more understandable potentially, then you could enter another statement. If I'm unsure or past, does that never come back to me again? Like, will, will I lose that? So once, yeah, once you, you answer a statement, it won't come back to you again, yeah. If, when you come back to the platform, unless you delete all of your cookies and all of that, you'll have it. Well, I guess I'm not the only one who has the question on trolling. Um, mm-hmm. I'm wondering if that's a natural way to deal with if say like one percent of the people are in there to to cause this trouble with the polling if if people are just passing on what they say if it just drops to the bottom yeah if yeah exactly it it drops to the very bottom if if people are saying you can also collect location information and things like that sometimes to to filter depending on your need You can do a bunch of monitoring to see how, you know, maybe advertising is changing things, stuff like that. But yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's very straightforward to, to set up and, and participate in. And as soon as seven people vote, the report goes, goes online. And then how you choose to distribute the report is, is up to the mod- moderators. So you can either make the link to the report 
just public that anyone can access it or look at it, or you can you can keep that data internally and then digest and send out that information later. Yeah. Can participants add demographic questions or yeah. oh. or how does that get determined? The participants can add add any questions. You can, on your end, decide that you don't want them to to include any demographic statements and then just you know remove it out of the conversation. But yours was a demographic statement in some way, and I could show you how to treat it. You just click it as metadata, and then they don't go into they don't go into the clustering. So I work for government would be, and then it doesn't go into the clustering and it's treated as this separate metadata. The, the moderators have a lot of flexibility in how they set things up. Yeah. Uh, I just noticed this uh, comments, oh, I work for the government, it's really good because uh, we can see some comments that can ask, it's sort of like a question asking for uh, what, what the online users are, like which, which kind of stakeholders they belong to. So you, we can have some C comments like, I, I, I am a, a nonprofit, or I'm from nonprofit, and some sort of that kind of stakeholders, then we can collect the data that, uh, and we can realize what the online user or those who have participated in the survey could be. Yeah. Yeah. And if you have a broader question, then you can ask the more, specific questions within this and then later break it out. So for instance, the question that Devin brought up, like you can, you can add that in and then, you know, like follow a second line of conversation down that channel um, in a nitrogen fashion. Yeah, any? So we're gonna leave you with some time to vote, to add statements. Um, we'll keep track of things and make sure that we mark what's metadata as metadata. Uh, and in a few minutes, we'll have um, some snacks, and then we'll get ready for the stakeholder consultation portion of this. Um, so it's a bit of a break, but uh, yeah, engage with Polis. Also, just to make sure, is the concept of the metadata question clear to people here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so this is a metadata statement. I'm an academic or a journal. So this this is an interesting question. You want you want this is this is an example of a statement that you need to split into two. You ask only one question at a time, so when people say agree or disagree, you know which part they're talking about. So it would be I am an academic would be one statement, I am a journalist would be a separate statement. Mm -hmm. And so this also really illustrates like the importance of having yeah. a moderator for your polis poll conversation because you might want to, like, in time, you're going to have to adjust these or fix them. Uh, so it's not something that you just want to, like, leave out there and then not, not watch. Yeah, you want to watch continuously. And you can split that yourself? Sorry? Can you split that statement? Yeah, so you can remove a statement and then you can put in as two statements. And the nice thing is the moderators and participant statements are treated equally. It's not that you get special statements because you're a moderator, so then it just all goes into the conversation, and then it depends on how people are reacting to the statement, how it gets toggled up or down. So what you would do if you rejected it as the moderator, you just go back and re-add them as seed statements, and they'll go back in. So as a moderator, like seed statements basically are the ones that will start it, but also any questions that you want to add. Yeah, you'd put it back. Yes, you had. Did you end up rejecting it? Did I end up? Uh, Did you end up rejecting that question? Yes. Oh, I Did put you want to? Oh, yeah, add them back. Yeah. And then you could just go in here and. What's the best protocol to deal with uh, sentiments that are not framed in a way that, 
like sentiments that are not for start don't start with I think or whatever like is that the role of the moderators to weed out or is that something participants can sort of vote against by saying pass unsure so a combination it doesn't it doesn't have to be I feel you know something it doesn't have to be phrased like that as long as it's clear that it's a single sentiment and it's it's your sentiment um, and that it's that's up to the moderator people have different codes of contact people have different ways of dealing with things and so there's a fair bit of uh, leeway there so you could take it out clean it out put it back um, one really good practice and um, is that if you moderate out something then you let people know um, you say these many statements were removed because of this this and this reason and so that actually increases the transparency and, and the trust that that participants have in the moderators Um, I was wondering if the V-Taiwan team could let us know if um, the stakeholder groups agree on the seed statements before the poll is publicly released. Yeah. And just relatedly, can you... Uh, elaborate on whether people share the same definitions for terms too, or to what degree you know that to be the case? Because I think that's that's a piece of uh, Liz's question as well. You mean the terms? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if we've gone over the, I don't know if we defined the O-R-I-D uh, in terms of the, the, the O phase, objective and fact findings phase which would address David's question. Maybe you could say a few words about that, which would have happened before what we're doing right now. Um, and for the online opinion collection, we, uh, for the C comments, we have to have those uh, discussion about C comments at mini hackathon just right after the proposal. So all the C comments are agreed upon by all the participants at this uh, mini hackathon. And, and as for our ID method, we encourage uh, the, peop uh, the participants to have the C comments uh, by, or by the definition of or in R, which is the objective and reflective. Excuse, um, yeah, because uh, as we can see that these uh, or and are are um, more about the facts and also the feeling, and these are the like the source and the materials, substantial materials for for uh, our next uh, stage, like consultation meeting. Yeah, so or and are uh, we are what we focus on on. At, the, at this uh, opinion stage, and all of the C comments are agreed by the participants. Yeah, but we, yes, uh, we, we uh, encourage, I mean, uh, we have the C comments for around like five, at least five C Thanks. comments would be great, because one or two might be too, that, that too few, so, yeah, five, but yes. When you say people who come for the hackathon, is it mostly citizens then, or government? Do, do all of the stakeholders, to Liz point, Liz's point, come to the hackathon? Uh, in a CII case, we have Ministry of Justice uh, at the mini hackathon for the C Commons discussion. Okay. So they, do, they did participate in this part. And, and for other cases, I'm not, I'm not that sure, but it depends on uh, the uh, competent authority, whether they are able to join. Because uh, when we have a like agenda for a specific, on a specific day for mini hackathon, we will post it on Slack and let the participants or the online user know that they can uh, join which, which mini hackathon they are interested in. So for a specific issue, uh, they can get to know the date earlier and we all set the date. So if the competent authority cannot make it, then we still have the 
HackPad hack as the record as the recording for the competent authority. Yeah. So also, um, which date? I mean, we. Um, which mini hackathon would be talking about uh, what issue is also uh, agreed and also voted by the uh, uh, by the participants? Where where do you do that voting? Is it uh, online? Stack, is it in person? Stack. Some uh, some I mean active participants will have a registration page on KKTix and they will send out the link on Slack so they can have like uh, in the next week or the to next 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 weeks, they will have a agenda and also set up a registration page. So let the uh, participants get to know uh, which which mini hackathon that they would like to join. Yeah, that's nice. So are we going to have a break? Yeah. yeah. So there are some snack behind. So uh, so yes, how many how many? minutes do we have for the break? Ten minute break. Okay. It's just yeah. Yes. Is there a way to log in to pull us without Facebook or Twitter? Is it? I don't know. <laughs> yes, there is, but you have to create an account? Yeah. Or just enter It says optionally connect to see friends and people you know in the visualization and I have no other way. Okay. To, to see to see friends and and you know other participants, you it has to be social media because people don't have a a polis social account. You get a polis account, but it's not. I know who my friends are, and I can see how other people are voting. If that's the case, then what other so like what is polis's data retention in regards to social media data? Do you know like just the uh, whatever is is public which is your name and followers for Twitter, I think, something like that. Okay. Um, yeah. But we are encouraging everyone to have their own deploys, so we own zero data. Of which there's a, uh, well, we should talk about uh, dockerization of Polis, and there's, there's, a few, there's a few attempts that could use civic tech community help when it comes to uh, packaging polis in a way that respects whatever data privacy preferences various communities have. When you come to the back, if you can bring your cups, if you have them, too. 